Harith ibn Udris asked the Wud al-Ta'i, two pious predecessors, rahimahumullah jami'a, advise me. He replied, let death be your slogan. In another narration he said, know that the soldiers of death are in wait for you. Subhanallah, what kind of advice is this? If you go today and seek advice from someone, he will say, oh, don't forget to mention that in the quote. Do not forget, you're going to lose $2. This advice was what? Know that the soldiers of death are in wait for you. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Salam ibn Ashya mentioned, let death be your motto. Let death be your slogan. Let it be embroidered in front of you day and night. Death, death, death. In other words, whatever you do, before you confront anything, make sure, is this going to benefit me when I die? Is it going to be for or against me when I die? Always before your eyes. Place the word, the five letter word, D-E-A-T-H, or the three letter word, Mim Wau Te Maut. Always confront yourself with this. Before you do anything, is this going to benefit me when I die? If it is, Alhamdulillah, I accept it. If it does not, I throw it away. Because on the day of judgment, when you're in the grave, when you die, it's going to harm you. That deed will harm you. And you do not want this. You do not want this. You do not need this. You need luxury, comfort when you die. And this action, if it's against Allah's pleasure, throw it away. You do not need it. If someone wants to say to you now, there is an enemy outside, outside, waiting to attack you at any moment, what would you do? You will stand up, prepare yourself, get your ammunition, prepare your clothes, Look, you'll be alert, you'll be alarmed. You await his surprise attack. This is life and death. This is life and death. What have we prepared for its surprise attack? What have we awaited, prepared for it? It's going to attack us at any moment. Death is confronting us every single day in every single area. Wallahi, it's like a man. A man who has stretched forth his neck. He stretched it like this. With a sword held like this above it. This is death. This is how death is. It's like a man who has stretched forth his neck with a sword held above it, waiting for the command to slice, to cut, to chop that head off. This is death. And we are witnessing this every day. We are witnessing this sword every single day. Friends, loved ones, severing their ties from this life. Every single day. We must awaken from our sleep, be alert from our slumber, before it's proclaimed, before it's shouted, so and so is ill. So and so is ill, and so and so is you. They will cry out, they will proclaim in public. His tongue has become heavy. His forehead has become sweaty. And the angel of death is indeed ready. Imagine yourself at the time of death. Imagine yourself at the time of death. Can you imagine? You're going to have to imagine it because you're going to be there. We're all going to be there. Yet today we feel comfort, we feel tranquility, we feel relaxed because we are among each other. But on that day, this will all vanish. Well, lie, it will vanish. This will all vanish. Imagine yourself at the time of death. What thoughts cross your mind? Memories of family and friends, panic, regret. Of death, did you feel it? The ineffable feeling 
of crossing the boundary from one world to another. What is life in the hereafter like? You'll be feeling this before your soul is taken. What is life in the hereafter like? The darkness of the grave, the horror of the day of judgment, the recompense of stringency, the thinness of the, the sirat. Those who used to visit you cease to visit you. Those who envied you, put at rest their enviousness. Unless you're finished, you're gone. Your family, pay attention not to you anymore, but to your wealth. People staring at you when you're dying, when you're experiencing the agonies of death. Your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your son, your daughter, your niece, your nephew, your auntie, your uncle, your husband, your wife. All looking at you, staring at you, but they cannot do anything. Nothing. No matter what they do, how they do it, whom they get, they cannot do anything. As the Almighty Lord mentions in Surah Al-Waqi'ah, فَلَوْ لَا إِذَا بَلَغَتِ الْحُلْكُونَ وَأَنْتُمْ حِينَ إِذِينَ تَنْظُرُونَ وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْكُمْ وَلَكِنْ لَا تُبْسِلُونَ فَلَوْ لَا إِنْ كُنْتُمْ غَيْرَ مَدِينِينَ تَرْجِعُونَهَا إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ then why do you not intervene? This is talking to the people who are looking over the dead person, the dying person. Why do you not intervene when the soul of the dying person reaches the throat? You are looking at this person and you at the moment are looking on. But we, Allah says, the angels of death are nearer to him than you, but you see not. SubhanAllah. Yeah, and you are all this person is experiencing the agonies of death. Your family is over you, almost touching you, yet the angels of death is closer than they are. Closer than they are, but they cannot do anything. They cannot help you in any way. They don't know what is happening to you. They can't see what you're seeing. They cannot experience what you're experiencing. Because this, now to this person, is the knowledge of the unseen. The knowledge of the unseen here is hitting him directly.